What's up everybody? It's your boy Justin with Herbal Lifestyle and today we have another compost tea video and with that being said I have the OG tea bags right here. It's just a new tea bag that I recently just purchased online. It got shipped to me in the mail and we're gonna see how it works. This is a reusable compost tea bag with a 400 micron nylon thread so that you know everything kind of stays within here but allows the microbes to move freely so what we're going to do now is we're going to get some amendments in here and we're going to talk about it let's go all right so now we're underneath the olive tree the best part of the house where we get all the shade and we're going to add the first main ingredient which is going to be compost um, i actually did attempt to make a recent compost tea using my own homemade compost and you know i can't test my compost I, mean, I could but it's, it's too much effort and the compost that i use isn't well sifted or anything like that so i prefer using still a compost that is locally made and that you're purchasing that is tested so we're going to need four cups of compost that's three we're gonna work on getting a more bacterial dominant uh, compost tea again I can't really test it but wow so let's just pack that down so you can see that it doesn't really hold so this is like a review kind on this but at the same time a good composting video but since it's my first time using it, I can see that I would have to pack down all my ingredients in order for it all to fit in here so that when I close it you know I can actually get everything in without having it overloaded so I needed four cups of compost now when you're doing a bacterial dominant uh, compost tea it's better just to use uh, vermicompost which is like worm castings uh, but since I don't have any at the moment I'm actually going to be using regular compost but what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed it the proper amendments to promote more bacterial dominant uh, you know compost tea all right so now we are by the front door where we have our last few ingredients we're going to add our next ingredient which is kelp meal. You can find this at your local nurseries or local hydroponic stores. You won't find this at like a Home Depot or anything. We're gonna use a half cup of kelp meal. We're gonna pour this all in here and that's it. So we're gonna actually now close this up. So this was simply compost and kelp meal. Four cups of compost and a half cup of kelp meal. We're gonna just kinda drop this in there. So honestly, while this is just filling up with five gallons of water, we're gonna let that just seep on in there. It doesn't really matter too much. Cause as long as everything is sealed nice and tight and nothing can get out, keep a clean compost tea and now we're gonna add a few more ingredients to this compost. All right, everybody, so the next step is we're gonna add two tablespoons of seaweed extract. And right now, since I'm the only person filming, I'm just gonna have to pour it in and then show you what it looks like after it's done. All right, so now you can see it's kind of like a muggy, dark water. Next step is we're gonna add two tablespoons of molasses. The molasses I like to use is Hybrix, just because this is a very strong, potent, you know, like extract of molasses and it is on sulfured black strap molasses it's exactly what you need so let's get so it. now that the black strap molasses this hybrix molasses is inside the water you can no longer see the bag because how muggy it makes it let's go ahead and get this now to the inline pump where we will begin to aerate it all right so now i'm in the garage where i have the eco air doesn't even matter inline pump just make sure it's enough to handle five to 10 gallons of water for these little setups. 
you drop in your five gallon here you drop in your nice little air stone Blam, just like that and then you could put a lid on it or not put a lid on it but that's about it it's pretty simple pretty easy all right so now you saw how easy it can be to make a compost tea. The only things that are the cons about making a compost tea is after you're done using your tea, you will now need to dispose of it. So, uh, well not dispose of the tea, but you know, clean up the, your products. So you're gonna have to either dispose of your compost tea bag or you're gonna wash it off and reuse it like the one I just got now. Um, another thing you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to clean out your pot or your bucket that you just want, you know, use to make the compost tea. When cleaning your bucket, I really recommend using bleach and a sponge that you plan on never using for anything else but that. Uh, when you get your air stone out, soak it in hydrogen peroxide. Hopefully you didn't let it sit too long to the point where you might need some bleach to clean it out because if you do use some bleach, you're gonna need to uh, pump out that bleach later. By doing that, you're going to need to stick your air stone inside of a bigger pot of, you know, bigger thing of water and let it aerate out and get all the bleach out of it. And at that point, you put in another piece of clean water and see if it's, you know, cleaned out. See what's the difference between a bacterial dominant uh, compost tea and a fungi dominant back, uh, compost tea? And simply, the difference is, is with bacteria dominant compost teas, you're gonna be feeding more of your annual crops, your vegetables, your flowers, uh, things that basically once they grow, they die and they're gone. Uh, so those are the things that you wanna keep that in mind. So this time I did make a bacterial dominant. Uh, I'm gonna be using this more for my uh, annual crops, like my tomatoes and my peppers and uh, cucumbers and things like that, squash. And that should definitely benefit them. But you know, when making these teas, they, they're all for different reasons. So fungi dominant is gonna be better for you know, your fruit trees, your shrubs, your perennials, things of that nature. That's really what, what they're for, and as well as your foliar feeds. When you're foliar feeding, it doesn't matter if it's an annual or perennial, I recommend it being a fungi dominant at least, you know, once a week, because when you're feeding even your annuals with the fungi dominant foliar feed, this is like a waxy protective coat for the leaves themselves. It's gonna actually attach to the leaves and spread, and this is not gonna allow any pests or insects to get to them, which are gonna destroy your leaves and, and you know make your plant unhappy. So it's all about taking care of your plants and doing things that's right for them. And so you know, I hope with the information I provided, this helps you guys out. Uh, one more thing I have to say is just when watering. You know, do a one to 10 ratio, one part uh, compost tea, 10 parts water. Uh, same with your foliar feed, same ratio, one to 10, and you're pretty much good to go. This is Justin with Herbal Lifestyle. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and uh, live your life free. And I'll see you guys soon. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Have a good day.